Hello again and welcome to another Picky Board Gamers instructional video. My name is Hector Akos and today I'm gonna be teaching you how to play Mombasa. Mombasa is one of Alexander Pfister's previous designs and it's played with two to four players. I strongly recommend you play this game with four players. Come join me at the table to learn how to play the game. On the board of Mombasa we see a map of Africa as well as four of Africa's major chartered companies. These companies don't belong to any specific player, but all players will be expanding these companies by placing these trading posts from their home region on the board, revealing these coin symbols. Through the game, players will be acquiring shares of these companies, mainly by forwarding their marker in the corresponding track of each company, as well as from acquiring specific cards. In the end of the game, and for each of the companies, each player will multiply the number of shares he has to the number of revealed coins and he will get that result as coins from the bank. Coins are victory points for this game and at the end of the seventh round the wealthiest player will be the winner. In the end of the game players will also gain coins from advancing in this diamond track and in this bookkeeping track. Now let's make a step back and see how this game is set up. At first place the board in the middle of the table, then find the four cards depicting two arrows which are used only for the setup of the game. Shuffle them and place one face down card to each of the four sides of the board in such a way that one of the arrows is pointing to the board. Then flip all these cards face up. For each one of the cards you need to find the two track parts that have the same symbol as the one on the part of the card that is near the board. For example now the two B1 track parts. After you find them, connect them, return the card to the box and place this track next to the board. This track is linked to this company. Each company has a set of 15 trading posts which you are gonna use to fill the 15 spaces of each company's home region. Find the cards that depict a letter on the top right corner. You will find this way 5 stacks A, B, C, D and E. Flip them face down, shuffle each stack and create the action card stack of the game by placing A cards on top of B and then on top of C, on top of D and finally on top of the E cards. Now take this deck and fill the 12 spaces of this card display by moving from right to left, top to bottom. You will also find four sets of cards depicting one of the four player colors. These will be the starting cards of each player. Finally, you will find four expansion cards depicting a number from one to four on the top right corner. We will use them shortly. Separate the books by their letter A, B and C and create three face down piles. Afterwards, set up the book display by placing face up book tiles on their corresponding spaces. You will need four A books, four B books and four C books which you're gonna pick randomly from their corresponding piles. Place a supply of coins next to the board. These numbers are the seven rounds of the game. If you're playing with two players only, place one coin to each one of these spaces. If playing with three players, then place a second coin on round three, five and seven. If playing with four players, then all spaces should have two coins. Place the four bonus tiles next to the board as well. Each player chooses a color and gets the corresponding board. Then he receives the nine starting cards of his color, a set of four slim track markers and a set of bonus markers. For the bonus markers he will need three if it's a two player game or just two if it's a three or four player game. Players also receive a coin, an ink jar and a diamond marker. Then players place one track marker in the starting space of each of the four company tracks. Players then determine a first player at random who gets the first player token. Then you take the four numbered cards and you give number one to the first player, number two to the second player and so on. If there are spare cards, return them to the box. Shuffle the ten starting tiles and deal each player two tiles face down. Players then take those tiles, select one of them and they place it here. Then players place the diamond marker and the ink jar to their initial spaces. The symbols depicted in the top left corner of each player's starting tile are connected to specific cards in each player's starting deck. Players must find these three cards in their deck and place them in the three colored slots above their board. Finally, each player receives the bonus depicted in the bottom left corner of his starting tile. 
In that case, the player receives one move in the diamond track as well as a move for his track marker in the St. Louis track. The game is played over seven rounds and each round consists of three phases, the planning phase, the general action phase and the short preparation phase for the next round. Right below each player's personal board we find five action slots for players to play their action cards. Above the board we find the five resting slots holding the resting decks that are linked to the action space directly below. In the beginning of the game, two of these action slots are locked, so players start the game with three action slots and their linked resting decks. In the planning phase, players pick up their cards and they choose and place one card face down to each unlocked action slot. After all players are done, players flip their cards face up. The cards that players choose in the planning phase will indicate what actions they may perform in the upcoming general action phase. There are four main categories of cards and each category is connected to specific actions. First of all we have the goods cards. There are three types of goods, coffee, bananas and cotton. Playing these cards players gain points which they can use to buy more cards from this market here or use them to forward their markers in these four company tracks. Next we have expansion cards depicting a hat. When players play these cards they gain points which they can spend to expand these companies. Next we have bookkeeper cards which help the players move their ink jar along this path. Very important, when the ink jar reaches or passes this space here, players get to unlock another action space. So in any future planning phase they will be able to play another card from their hand. Finally we have the diamond merchant cards and with these players get to move their diamonds along the diamond track and again once the diamond reaches or passes this point players get to unlock another action phase to be used for any future planning phase. Starting with the first player and then moving clockwise players take turns performing an action. It is very common that players will be using their cards while performing these actions. When they do that they will be flipping the used cards face down. The first action is that a player may use one or more goods cards of one type from their action area. By doing that, players gain the points depicted on the cards they use. In this example, the player may use this coffee card and gain 2 points or he may use both of these cards and gain 3 points. Instead, he could use the banana card and gain 2 points. After the player flips the goods cards he used face down, he may use the points to buy one card from the market by paying its cost. The cost of each card is the sum of the card's cost plus the card's space cost. So this card costs 3 points while this costs only 1. When a player buys a card, he adds it to his other cards and he may use it from the next planning phase. Some of the cards depict this symbol, giving the player that buys them a share of the company that is also depicted on the card. In the bottom of the card deck that will be used to replenish those cards at the end of each round, there is also another type of cards, the single share cards. These may not even appear in the game if the players don't buy enough cards. These serve only as giving the player that buys them a share of the depicted company, and the players may not use these cards in any other way. Players can also use their goods points to advance their token in one or more company tracks, spending one point for each space they move. At this point I would like to demonstrate the symbols depicted on those tracks. Passing through spaces depicting this symbol means that the player gains that many shares for that company. So now the blue player has one share for the Cape Town company. If he passes this point, he now has two shares for the Cape Town company. If he reaches the end of this track, then he has nine shares for Cape Town. Remember that players may also gain shares in a company by acquiring specific cards. The next symbol I'd like to show you is this one here. Reaching or passing this point means three different things. First of all, once reached or passed, the player will gain the number of coins that is depicted here. So now the blue player will collect one coin. Secondly, each time another player passes this point, all other players that have collected this money before will collect them again. So in this example, purple will collect a coin and blue player will collect a coin as well. Thirdly, a player that reaches or passes through this point, he unlocks for himself the power that is depicted here. I will not explain all these powers, they are all easy to follow and can be found on page 11 of the rulebook. 
However, for the sake of this example, I will say that this power gives the player a discount of one point each time he buys a card if he has spent bananas from his action area. Further down the track, we will find another power which usually is a more powerful version of the first one. A player that unlocks this one as well may not combine the two powers together. He may either use this one or the previous one. The last symbol I'd like to explain is this arrow depicting coins with a minus value. To move through this arrow, a player must pay the depicted amount of coins to the bank, otherwise he must remain at the last space. The second action is to use all expansion cards in the action area. In that case, the player may not choose to use some of his cards depicting a hat, he must use all of them. He adds up the values for his total expansion points. The player then selects one of the companies and uses his expansion points to help this company expand by building new trading posts from the home region to anywhere the company is connected. By connected, I mean any region that is adjacent to the home region of the company or adjacent to any other already placed trading post. As you can see, there are three columns of trading posts in all of the companies. When a player picks up a trading post, he needs to select a column and pick up the topmost building from there and then place it anywhere he can. Chain placement is allowed, so a player could choose this one, place it here and then this one, place it there. The cost of each placement is one point if we build through a thin borderline or two points if we pass through a thick borderline. Players may also build in a region occupied by another company by paying one point on top of the normal cost. The player spends as much of his expansion points as he can and then if he has entered a region with another company's trading post, he must return it back to its home region. The way to do this is that the player again chooses one of the three columns, but this time he moves from bottom to top. Note that the final spaces in each of the columns depict two coins, and once revealed, these cannot be covered again, so the only valid spaces for returning these trading posts is either this one or that one. Finally, the player collects all the bonuses depicted in the regions he just expanded. The player collects these bonuses in any sequence he desires. These bonuses include gaining coins, gaining bookkeeping points, advancing in the diamond track or in the track linked to the company you just expanded. The third action is use one bookkeeper card in your action area. This action triggers movement of the player's ink jar. The ink jar steps only on placed books on this track one after the other if the player satisfies the requirements depicted on the top spaces of the book. The books require the player to have specific cards face up in his action area at the time the ink jar moves. For example, the first book requires the player to have one cotton and one coffee. At this moment, the player has two and two, so the ink jar could step on this book. The second book requires a player to have a diamond merchant or a bookkeeper, not the one used to trigger the action of course, and four goods of the same type. The player doesn't satisfy these requirements, so the ink jar would stop there. The process of the action is the following though. So, when doing this action, first of all you have the option to pay two coins and flip any book in the track face down. The second step is to move the ink jar until it stops. So we start checking the requirements of each book. The first one, we satisfy the requirements so the ink jar steps on the book. The second book doesn't have any requirements anymore as we flipped it face down. The third one requires two cotton and one coffee. We have two and two, so the ink jar steps here as well. And now the ink jar must stop as there are no other books on the track. The player may also stop the ink jar's movement whenever he wishes, he doesn't have to let it stop automatically. When the ink jar stops, the player will collect the bonus depicted in the bottom right little corner of the book. In this case, it's one coin which the player collects immediately. The last step of the action is spending the depicted bookkeeping points. Whenever players gain bookkeeping points, they spend them on the book display. Players may buy one or more books from the book display by paying the cost depicted above the book, and if there is a coin below the book they buy, they gain that as well. Players may also change their bookkeeping points for one coin each. So in this example, the player gains two bookkeeping points, which he can spend to gain this book. The player then places the acquired books face up, and that's the end of this action. Please note that you cannot place type A books in spaces depicting an A crossed out. In these spaces you can only place type B and type C books. 
If a player's ink jar ever reaches the last space on the bookkeeping track, then from now until the end of the game, the player will receive two coins for each bookkeeping point he receives. The fourth action is use one diamond merchant card in your action area. This action triggers movement of your diamond in the diamond track. At first, the player gains all the bonuses depicted in the white part of the card, which will always include movement in the diamond track. Here, the player gains two moves in the track and also a coin from the bank. Then the player checks for more moves on the diamond track based on the condition depicted on the colored part of the card. For every two pickaxe symbols in regions occupied by the Cairo company, the player will gain one more move on his diamond track. So in that case, the player gains one more move and that was the end of the action. If a player ever reaches his diamond at the last space of the diamond track, then for each move he cannot perform, he will gain two coins from the bank. The fifth action is place one bonus marker in one of the available bonus spaces in that area. Within the small circles we see requirements the player must satisfy if he is to place his marker there. This bonus here is the only way a player may gain the first player token, and this restriction applies only to the player who already has this token, who may not use this bonus space in his first turn, thus giving the opportunity to his opponents to get this token from him. This bonus here costs a coin and the player selects and acquires one of the available cards in the card display and pays its costs in coins. This bonus requires the player to sacrifice one of his cards from his hand only and gain coins from the bank equal to this value plus 2. With this card the player would get 4 coins. These bonus spaces work the same and require the player to have the highest or tie for the highest value total of the depicted goods on the face-up cards in his action area at the time of the marker placement. So if a player has 5 expansion points on his action area and no other player has 6 or more, he may place his bonus marker here as an action and gain the bonus depicted here based on his value total. With 5 expansion points, the player will get 3 moves in the Mombasa track and also a coin. With these bonus spaces, players gain access to these 4 bonus tiles. They don't pick them up immediately, they just reserve them and collect them in the last phase of the round so they can use them in the next round. These bonus tiles are like normal cards. The good thing with them is that players don't need a free slot to play them. They play them freely in their action area. This bonus tile is kept next to the player during the general action phase. The player may use this tile in any one of his actions by placing it in the bottom of any goods card, increasing its value by 1. After the card is used, the tile is also used as well. The final action is called End Your Own Action Phase and is performed when players cannot or don't want to perform any more of the previously explained actions. When players perform this action, at first they choose one of their resting decks and pick all of the cards in there, adding them back to the cards in their hand. Then they flip all cards in their action area face up again and move them to the corresponding resting deck above the board just like that. When a player performs this action, he cannot perform any more actions for the current general action phase. And when the last player performs it, then we move to the next phase, which is the preparation phase for the next round. After the end of the general action phase of the round, play proceeds with the preparation phase for the next round, in which you have to carry out the following steps. If, however, that is the seventh round, then skip this phase and move straight to the final scoring of the game. At first, take all the coins in the book display for the next round and place them in the same column below the books. If it's only one coin, place it here, but if there are two coins, also place one there. The next step is to fill up the card display. First of all, remove all the cards in the rightmost column out of the game. Then, push all cards to the right. Then fill all the empty spaces in the display with cards from the top of the card deck, moving from right to left, top to bottom. Finally, players take back their bonus markers and players that used these spaces also take the corresponding bonus tile. When it comes to scoring, execute the following steps. At first, each player scores a victory point for each coin they possess. Next, players calculate their score for their participation to the four companies. They count the total shares found on their cards and from the progress of their marker on the corresponding tracks and multiply this number to the number of revealed coins in the company's home region. Finally, players score victory points for their progress in the diamond track as well as the bookkeeping track. We can find victory point values all along these tracks. 
They score victory points for the highest value their diamond marker has passed. And they do the same for the bookkeeping track. Please note that what's important here is the position of their ink jar and not how far their books went along this track. After that, players tally up their score and the player that has the most victory points wins the game. In case of a tie, the tied players share their victory. This concludes the video of how to play Mombasa. If you liked the video and want to see more, please subscribe to my channel and until next time, have fun and play more board games.